All right, I want to go see the return of Monster Jam back in Cleveland by popular demand. A four-pack of tickets here for you. It is February 16th, 17th, and 18th at the Romo Fijo. Four performances over three days. Want to see your favorites. They're going to have them. El Toro Loco and Gravedigger and Megalodon and lots more of your favorite Monster Jam trucks. Get the lowdown on the whole thing, monsterjam.com. Four tickets for you for caller 10. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. To pee or not to pee? Whoops, I already started. The Alan Cox Show is back. On 100.7 WMMS. Man, remember the cult? God damn, these guys were good. Now my parents are still in it. Hey! You what? My parents are still in it. <laughs> the Indeed. Is probably yeah. called Latter-day Saints. <laughs> Love the cult. Ian Asbury, I got to tell you, he is one of the most underrated front men in rock and roll. This album, the, the first cult album didn't really do anything. They're still putting records out. They did something like a year and a half ago, I think, so they're still out there doing stuff. He might be the only original member left. I don't know if Billy Duffy's part of it still or not, but I remember I bought this album, the second cult record, kind of one that really blew him up, was called Love, and it came out just as I had started high school. And, And they were getting some radio play, but they still kind of operated in this area between what would eventually be called alternative music and rock and roll, but just love the cult. Matt Sorum played drums for him for a while before he went to Guns N' Roses. But Ian Asbury, boy, I never hear people talk about him when they talk about, like, greatest frontman in rock and roll or greatest... And that's always based on, obviously, the overall popularity of the band itself. But, you know, nobody's going to talk about a great frontman from a band that people aren't that hip to, but... I was clicking around a couple days ago, and somebody was talking about the cult. And I was like, God damn, I love the cult. I haven't heard about them in a long time. But they're still making records. They made something about a year or so ago. I don't know if they tour. Or I don't even know how old Ian Asbury is these days. But that guy should get, uh, he should get way more attention than he gets. Because they're awesome. How old is Ian Asbury? 61 years old. From Cheshire, England. Good for him. Anyway, cult. Cavaliers are going to play tonight in Miliwakay. You know, the only thing that I could think of with them getting rid of that coach 43 games in was that he didn't get along with Giannis. That was the only thing I could think of. Because wouldn't you make that move once you got Doc Rivers? If you're going for Doc Rivers... Don't you move that chess piece out when you get Doc Rivers to sign. It just, that struck me as one of those situations where it's got to be because of a guy on the team that they're trying to keep happy is not getting along with the coach. I mean, that's probably pretty likely. Yeah. So Cavs play tonight in Milwaukee, and they play them again on Friday. What the Cavaliers will do, I would love to get a little inside information. Uh, from someone. We've got people in the Cavaliers organization. I'd love to pick their brains about what it is, just broad strokes, what the teams do when they're doing these back-to-backs, but there's a day in between. Because I'm sure there's some cities where you'd uh, have more fun having that day off in between. I'm sure there's practice. Well, there's also a situation where you don't want them to have too much fun. Miami's a city like that, where if you have a day off in Miami... That's never a good thing because right. there's too much partying happening. L.A. is kind of similar. 
Cleveland. But I mean, listen, yeah, you, Cleveland, you there's can, there's trouble there's trouble 20. to be gotten into oh, in Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we went to Slyman's and I couldn't get up We're the next at the morning. the Jack's Casino. <laughs> had a Reuben after. <laughs> you mean the Jack Casino, Mary? This is I how you know Mary well. hasn't been gambling for long. Don't worry about me. Jack's right? Casino. I'll do what I want. His mom named him John, but once he got into the casino biz, he wanted everybody to call him Jack. Are you you're still are you gambling in New York State? I know that's I not, not that's not priority for you, but will I don't you have eventually? Money to gamble. Cuz their laws are weird there, yeah. Well, she's finding out that it's expensive to live in New York City. Did you what? Know it was dude, expensive. why yeah, didn't yeah. you research that, Mary? I don't know, dude. Before you I moved kinda, to New York. Just rolled the dice and hoped, you know? How is the budgeting going? Up your butt. <laughs> so that good, huh? Yeah. No, it's <laughs> fine. I, um, it's not really going. It's hard, dude. I'm still a friggin' homeless person. I'm still, like, living in someone else's house, so mm-hmm. I haven't had to do, like, full shops for anything yet. You know what I mean? I'm getting enough groceries to last me a couple days and yeah. things like that. Yeah, I keep but forgetting not, that. There's nothing wrong with that. No, yeah, it's not It's not terrible. There's a, a couple little delis I've found that have similar prices. Like, there's one by It's all about finding work. your spots, yeah. Yeah, there's one by work. There's two by work. One that has, like, $4 coffees, so it's cheap, like, um, lattes and stuff. And then the other one has, like, the $8 salad. So there's a couple cheap places to grab, you know, the essentials. Oh. But yeah, it's not, nothing crazy. Um, when you do do <laughs> laundry <laughs> and have to take it for the fold and stuff, I tried that. Uh, the my, fold, the fluff and fold? Yeah. And it was $1.99 a pound. You tried in Lakewood? Yeah. And it cost me $48. Dude. I had a lot of laundry. 24 pounds, 24 of, pounds laundry? of laundry? Yeah. How long since you had done laundry? About three weeks. Jesus, Bill. What? 24 pounds of laundry. I mean, maybe go when you don't have. Why didn't you just break it up? Yeah, yeah, it's just like I, I had it all with me. I wasn't going to be like, well, let's just do this much. Was the service they, worth it? They did a great job. Yeah. It's a fantastic job. Everything's folded and put it on hangers, and it, it saved me a ton of time, so I appreciate it's that. It's worth the money. Uh, but I don't know if I'll be doing that regularly. Yeah, but you're not going to every time bring them 24 pounds of laundry. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I let that, it go too long. Do you wait that long to do it at your house? Sometimes. I just go until I don't have any more underwear. I've done that before where I'll just go buy new underwear. When I'm like, I'm not doing laundry. I have a new lot new. of underwear. I do too. So that's it's why like, it was I, yeah, so, it piles that's up. That's why it was 24 pounds of right. laundry. Twenty-four pounds. It's actually twenty underwear. It's actually twenty-seven pounds of laundry, <laughs> but I got a fifteen percent discount. So. Ooh, hey, wow, it was you. almost thirty pounds. Mm-hmm. If you had rounded, but I up. had like a few towels in there. I had. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, a some, few towels do not make it thirty pounds. You uh, had a month. No, but those are heavier towels. than some other I got things. Like, I had like four or five towels. That's that's hmm. a good amount of towels. <clears throat> How often are you using a new towel? Uh, every time. Every few days. I'm always doing towels in our house because I use a new one every time. You use oh. a new towel every shower. Yeah. That's wasteful. But you're why? No. Water. Why not? How am I wasting water? Because you're going to have to do more laundry. We have a lot of towels. I'm just saying. But how am I? Wa- no. <laughs> Mary's. Uh, why would Zoom? I not use a different Her, towel? It froze on the most judgy face. <laughs> I have judgy faces. But <laughs> oh, she's still frozen. She's, she's like, frozen. what? Just, you're, you're frozen on uh, just just judging Alan very hard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's fine. I get it. Not everybody's a, a different uh, towel every time guy. That's fine. I'll use it for pie three. You know, Bill, you should do what I do. Is just take your underwear. See, I do all my delicates in the sink in Woolite. Why? Because he's weird, man. But then, how do you? Don't have to ask. Um, <laughs> then I have to take wet clothes down to the dryer. <laughs> That's when you weigh them. That's yeah. right. Yeah, oh my God! It's sixty-five pounds of laundry. Mm-hmm. This is going to cost me dozens of dollars. I don't care for that. I just want to be in my new place, man. I'm so you will be. Tired As I understand like, it, you will be transient. Ugh, I want to come home. I'm you don't like, like living so, like that? No, dude. I it's haven't not a bad life. slept in a bed that's mine in like three months. That's overrated. <laughs> I'm so tired of this. Huh. But yeah. And I I come back home Saturday. So now I just want to like, I'm like itching. You know what I mean? 
I halfway thought about canceling my shows the next two nights and just coming home early. <laughs> I'm like, screw it. I'm, I'm just, I miss home. I miss everybody. I miss you have shows dad. tonight? I miss Brian. I have two shows tonight. I'm going to dinner with my fake grandparents tomorrow. Oh, right. Yeah, I had to put You haven't made it yet with them, right? No, not yet. You think you'll make it tomorrow night? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah, I'm just like. Will you order like 27 antsy. pounds of food just to get the doggy bags? <laughs> No, because I leave. Oh, right. You leave. I will only be there. I mean, I could have it for leftovers on Friday, but mm-hmm. I leave Saturday morning. Yeah. So. And then Mary will be in here with us on Monday and Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then out the rest of the week, she got to move. Mm-hmm. Got to get her bed all set up, and she's got to get her uh, put down her cat. I'm not and putting she... my cat down. <laughs> well, aren't you? Uh, you can't hold it onto it all the time. You're eventually going to have to put it down somewhere. Like set her. That's down. all I meant, Mary. Okay. What did you think I meant? I don't know what you meant. You meant donate her to the zoo. Cat. Donate her body to the lions, lions at the zoo. No, she is a lion. Got an email from Laura, who is one of our bureau chiefs in Richmond, Virginia. Listens on the iHeartRadio app. If you're one of our uh, listeners in other cities, I'd like to know where people are. Laura said I was listening to you talking about how all the right-wing nut jobs convinced kids. We were talking about this yesterday where the Oklahoma State Senate is trying to pass a bill saying that any kids who want to be cats in the classroom and want litter boxes and all that nonsense can't do extracurricular activities. Well, that was never a thing. That was all made up. That was some, like, you know, it was all lumped in with kids identifying as something else, right? And so it became this Fox News chyron that there's mm-hmm. schools and you'd see clips of like local school boards where people were freaking out because their kids want kitty litter boxes in the classroom. It was always made up. It was never true. But Laura, who is a teacher, was a teacher in Richmond, Virginia, said uh, that the rumors are true. She said, we had a go bucket with supplies in our classroom that did involve kitty litter, but because but it was because if kids needed to use the bathroom during a long shooter lockdown. Had nothing to do with kids wanting to dress up as cats. It was because, hey, if we're in here for a long, long time because there's somebody running through the school with an AR, we might ha- have to go to the bathroom. That's what it's for. And she's like, and so a bunch of, you know, peers of hers, teachers, had to explain this to regular adults who were flabbergasted that that was the real reason and that it wasn't that kids were running around dressed as cats and wanted accommodations. But, you know, that's the price of freedom. Uh, She said she quit public teaching. A day after there were two shootings near our school and our assistant principal only emailed us to say that our grades were late. She was a math teacher. And um, P.S., wish Mary all the best in New York City. Mm -hmm. There's Laura from Richmond, Virginia, former uh, public educator. Thank you for your service. Hey, Alan, it's a first-time caller. I heard the show earlier today. And, hey, Alan, it's a first-time caller. I heard the show earlier today, and how dare you not discuss with the king bedbug himself, Jeffrey Allen LaRoque, for National Bedbug Day. You should know all too well. You should. You need to get him in there to comment on what he would have thought. That would have been a great bit. Swing and a miss, buddy. Love the show. Swing and a miss to not have Jeffrey. Yeah. Are you high? That dude's not getting within 10 feet of this room. I'm going to bring in the bed bug guy. That's the great bit. Yeah. We are talking about yesterday. Um, they do that bed bug list every year. And Cleveland was number four. Chicago remains king. But you got to work hard to have more bed bugs than New York. Chicago did it. But Cleveland and Akron. Number about focusing, <laughs> setting goals, and achieving that. Number four on that list. But um, I don't know what you are thinking that I would have a dude who is solely known for bed bugs in this room. That's their problem down there. I ain't making it my problem. You insane? No, no thank you. But uh, good luck to all them and all that. Um, yeah, so 
uh, congratulations, Cleveland, Akron, you've done it again. It's got to be due in no small part to the University of Akron. No disrespect to them. But again, you'll see That's a lot. That's highly disrespectful. Well, it's not really because it also, is. like I said yesterday, also on that list is Champaign, Illinois. And that's not a huge town, but it's where the University of Illinois is, which is a huge school. So that's going to contribute. You're going to see lists of major cities, and then you're going to see what is that town? So it's probably a college town. Is Cleveland on the list because we got CSU? Like, why Why would well, no, Cleveland? Because no, we're no, a no. dirty rat hole. Well, because <laughs> Cleveland's Cleveland. I'm saying that Akron is on that list probably because of the university. I don't know about that because I didn't. I don't I, either. I'm just speculating. I don't. I don't know anyone. And now, granted, not that you would really talk about it, but I, it, I was there for five years, and I, I don't know anyone that got bed bugs. Like people would, there would be townies sometimes that would be throwing out. Yeah, old but Mac- this no, 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 no. I don't. This isn't stuff. current. This I'm not. Is... I'm also not necessarily talking about campus housing. Yeah. Talking about like when you're living in the student ghetto, or you know, like my I, first I college apartment. In, they're and, all hell. You know, they're all hell holes. And, yeah. We had we lived in a college neighborhood. It, it was like a college ghetto. I lived in a big house with like with six people, or it was five, six of us all together. But I had five other roommates, and the only time anyone would ever get any bed bug or infection or rash would be because they're taking furniture that old college students are throwing out, like that was like on the street, and they're like, oh, that's that's a you know a door we can use, or uh, you know there it got termites and it's an old kitchen or coffee table. Or old mattress. Like, yeah, you don't take that stuff off the street. But I don't know anybody that was really doing that. So, I mean, there's a bunch of dirty people that are residents that live in the student ghetto. Like, they, they just live there. They, they just never left. So it's just Akron residents that live amongst the students. Yes, I heard. When you die after burial, you have to come back as an insect or animal. Yes, I heard when you die after burial, you have to come back as an insect or animal. Well, if this so, I don't want to be a monkey, either a goat, a sheep, or donkey. My brother said he wants to come back a hog, but not wrongy. I want to be a bed bug just because I'm going to bite them young ladies' bumper. Or like a hot dog or a hamburger. And if you know your thing, don't be in a fright. It's only big fat woman. I'm going to bite you. The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite